The Daily Code Snippet. Before we discuss other form examples that you are likely to use on your websites, it is important to clarify the action attribute for the form element, which sends the data you are collecting to a server for processing. Without this step, data you are collecting is not being saved anywhere. If we go back to our initial example to collect an email, Here you see that the action is sending the data to a page with a file type of .php. PHP stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor, and it is an open source server-side scripting language compatible with many operating systems and databases. It is beyond the scope of these videos as one already needs a working knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in order to work with the PHP language. The method attribute can have a value of get or post. You use the get method to send form data URL variables while the post sends the data as an HTTP post transaction. What does this mean? Get will append form data into the URL as name and value pairs. Because the URL is visible, it is never for secure data. Post will append the form data inside the body of the HTTP request, not in the URL. So since PHP is beyond the scope, how could we collect our form data? Instead, you can use a CRM that handles the database for you. MailChimp has a free option we can demo. Once you have an account, go to, to the sign up form section of your account and select embedded forms. Here you see the default is a simple form to collect a user's first and last name and email. Below you see the embed code to copy and paste into your HTML page. If a user enters their information, this form is set up to send their data to your MailChimp account and the connected list. Here's the code divided into three sections. In the first section, we have the links and style that should be moved to the head of your web page. It even tells you to do so in the comments. This is the third section of the code that has scripts. Scripts can be added to the head or the foot. In this case, we would move it to the foot after the body closing tag. The rest of the form, or the second section, will be placed where you want the form to appear on your website, and we will focus on some of the code that, to see some of the elements and attributes that we have been discussing. The form element is right at the top. You can see the form element has an action and method attribute. The value of the action attribute is the URL that sends the data to our account in MailChimp. This is the part of the code that you will recognize from our previous discussion of forms. We see both label and input elements. The form is requesting an email address and the user's first and last name. You see two type attributes used, text and email. You can see how the for attribute of each label is related to the ID attribute of each input. The name attributes for each input is unique so that you can collect these three unique data points. Finally, at the end of the form, you will see the input that submits the form. The remainder of the code that you see has to do with error messaging for the form so that the user is sending data in the correct format and sending the required data. So once someone fills out the data requested in the correct format and hits submit, we will see a confirmation message. And if we look back into our account, we see that we now have someone signed up to our list. So this is how you may integrate a CRM form into your website in order to collect information from your users, even without having a working knowledge of PHP, because these services handle the management of the database and server. So as long as you have the correct code to send it to the service's URL for processing, your form will function. This week we discussed the input type for text. This input type, input type equals text, allows the entry of a single line of text. But there are instances where you may need a user to input a larger text block. In this case, you would instead use the following element, text area. The columns and rows attributes are used to define the area of text when the browser first loads the element. And again, this can be done using the CSS instead. 
The number for the rows attribute is the number of rows, but it's the number of characters per row for the columns attribute. The text area element functions similarly to other input elements, so label can be bound to your text area by matching the value for the for attribute for label and the id attribute for text area. Here is a code sample. In this example, the value for the for attribute, sample text area, connects it to the text area with the ID attribute with the same value. We have a text area set to five rows and 60 characters per row. The text placed between the text area opening tag and the text area closing tag is what will be pre-filled for the user as a sample or instructions. In this case, we have styled this text a gray color. Lastly, we have an input type to submit the user's input into the text area. Presented by Designers Learn Code.